Welcome to Reduce Provider Burden. I'm Dr. Michael Warner with Patient Advocacy Initiatives. Before we get started, please answer three quick questions. If a patient is given an order to obtain an x-ray of the right elbow when the trouble is with the left, it seems easy to correct a mistake. But there's more to it. In 2014, a patient on a gurney on the way to the operating room was asked which kidney was to be removed because of some preoperative confusion. To some extent, the patient's identification of which kidney was to be removed led to the surgical removal of the healthy kidney. A second operation removed the diseased kidney and the patient was placed on hemodialysis. Now this does not mean that patients should not engage with their health care, but it does reinforce that we should know the laws and the regulations. And we should be well aware of the processes that engage patients. And we should watch how that process is implemented. Everything gets very complicated when a patient requests to amend his or her health record. First, the patient's request must be written and sent to you for approval. At an encounter visit, this can be done verbally with the provider and the patient face-to-face. -face. This should not be done with a telephone call or with a text message to your cell phone. Remember, you have 60 days to respond to a patient's request to amend the health record. Whether you approve or deny the patient's request, you are mandated to send written notification to the patient. As we reviewed during the patient-centered part of this series, some records are HIPAA exempt. They include psychiatric notes, most workers' compensation, and motor vehicle accident records. The biggest nightmare with the patient's amendment to the health record is the responsibility to link and notify. If a patient makes an amendment, then the amended health record must link to the original. If you have paper records, then you do not want to throw away that piece of paper because it's already an official part of the health record. Similarly, you do not want to delete any records in the electronic health record because the patient made an amendment and helped create a new version of the note. In addition to linking the new note to the old one, you also need to notify other providers or medical institutions of your change. If EHR systems were interoperable, then the change on your computer terminal would create a change that could be seen by the entire health system network. But because EHR systems do not yet interoperate, you need to check the patient record access log and determine who may have downloaded, viewed, or transmitted uh, the original record. To these people or institutions, you also need to notify them of the amendment and the change. Can you see that an entire industry of health workers will be chasing old records with new ones? If you approve the patient's amendment, then you are responsible for linking and notifying. If you are part of a large health system, then the compliance officer may need to assume much of this duty. But even if you are not the one to approve the amendment, you can expect to receive notices of amendment. When you receive such a notice, you will be expected to read the patient's new amendment and see if it influences your current assessment and plan. Can you imagine getting numerous daily requests to amend the health record? Do you have the time? The three key components of a medical encounter include the history, the examination, and the medical decision making. If you are seeing a new patient, then all three must be documented. If you are seeing a patient who is established with you, meaning you or one of your group partners have delivered professional services within the past three years, then you only need two of the three if an established patient is able to organize his or her history, then they should be able to help reduce your workload. If your established patients write a documented first draft of the history, then your workload is potentially reduced by 50%. For a new patient who completes a prehistory, then your workload can be reduced by 33%. Now, we are not abandoning traditional history taking. You will need to review the patient's prehistory, which in my experience averages out to an HPI or status of four lines of text. In response to what you read, you will likely have a few brilliant questions to ask that are pertinent to the case you were presented. Our government considers patient-generated health data, PGHD, to include the patient's history. 
which can be gathered as part of the health record. Laws such as the privacy rule of HIPAA allow us to accept this information as a patient's request to amend the record. You have an opportunity to reduce your work burden. You have a chance to minimize the link and notify nightmare. And best of all, you have a chance to improve your relationship with your patient and upgrade your intellectual stimulation from working like an entry-level clerk to practicing medicine as a doctor. In the next two modules, I will show you the detailed rules regarding the patient's request to access and amend. Thank you for participating. Please quickly answer three quick questions.